Hi, I'm Tim. Today we're talking all about worm farming. I'm going to show you how to establish a new worm farm and how to care for them, how to troubleshoot some of the issues that may come about, and also how to use the fantastic products that come out of these. So worm farming is an excellent way to divert organic material or food scraps from landfill. They're really fun and simple to manage and they create beautiful products that are just so good for our garden. So let's get into it. Most of the worm farms you're likely to buy will be pretty similar. Some of the differences might include the shape and the size and how many layers you receive, but the fundamentals are still the same. You'll have layers on legs with a tap and a lid. And the top layers will all have holes. This allows the worms to move between the different layers of the worm farm. The bottom layer has no holes, and that is what we use to catch the worm wee and also the worm castings. Now when we're establishing our worm farm, we only need one layer with holes. This is where the worms are going to start, and we'll add the other layers a bit later. The first thing we need to do is add the bedding to our worm farm. Now to stop the worms falling through into the bottom layer, where they might either drown or not have access to the food, we're going to put down a layer of cardboard. The next thing we're adding to our worm farm is the bedding. And lots of worm farms come with bedding provided, and it's usually coconut fibre. If yours doesn't come with bedding, you can either purchase coconut fibre, or you can also use things like compost and shredded newspaper, they work fine. The purpose of the bedding is it traps moisture and gives the worms a little bit of food until you're ready to start introducing your food scraps. When you're establishing a new worm farm, you obviously need some worms. And the worms you're going to be using are different to the earthworms that might be growing in your garden. These are compost or tiger worms, and they only live very shallow in the soil where there's lots of organic material. So you can purchase them from uh, hardware stores in boxes of 500 or 1,000. Um, you can also get some off a friend if they've got a healthy population in their worm farm. The worms that I'm using in this worm farm come from one of my other farms, and that means they're already adults and ready to start consuming food. However, if you are buying a box of worms, most of them will be juveniles. So you need to give them a bit of time before you start feeding them. And the best thing to do is put them in the bedding, leave them for about a week, and then slowly start to introduce very small amounts of food. If you add too much food, the food will sit there, start to smell, and start to attract pests. And the best way to know how much food the worms need is to watch as the food's consumed. Once it's consumed, add some more. It takes a bit of time for the worms to mature, start to breed, and for your population to grow. Now we want to cover our worms with something. Some worm farms come with one of these, which is made out of natural fibre, and these are great because it traps moisture. If you, if you don't get one with a worm farm, you can just use any kind of natural fibre. Things like uh, hessian sacks are perfect. And then we want to replace the lid. At the front of your worm farm, you'll have a tap. And this is how we collect the worm weed. So you need a bucket to put under the tap and you should leave the tap open at all times. And that means that if there's lots of water coming through during heavy rain, the, the worm farm won't fill up with rain and your worms won't drown. Once you have your worm farm all set up and ready to go, you need to pick a spot for it. So you want a spot that's nice and close to the kitchen so you don't have to travel too far to drop off the food scraps. You want somewhere that's shaded because these worms don't tolerate temperatures over about 30 degrees. And you want somewhere you can leave the farm because they get very heavy. So think about these things when you're picking your site. So we'll continue to add food to our worm farm and we'll slowly start to see the volume of the material or the castings increase. Now there's plastic notches on the inside of this worm farm. Once the material gets level with those notches, then it's time to put in the next layer. And this layer sits on top of those notches and we need to make sure that the level of the first layer is high enough so that the worms can reach this next layer because this is where you start to add your food. And eventually the worms will start moving up your worm farm and down the bottom will just be the castings. Most of your food scraps are appropriate to add to your worm farm. If you chop up your fruit and vegetable scraps, the worms can consume them faster and you'll be able to add more food sooner. Eggshells should be crushed as fine as possible and tea bags and coffee are fine to add but make sure there's no plastic in the tea bags. A few things that you shouldn't add to your worm farm include pineapple and citrus which are very acidic, worms don't like consuming onions and garlic and meat is one thing you definitely don't want to add to your worm farm. It will sit there, create odours and attract unwanted pests. There's a couple of things that you should be doing to manage your worm farm and keep your worms happy. 
Firstly, we need to maintain adequate moisture levels within the worm farm. So it's a good idea to add a litre of water once a week and that's especially important in the summer months. The second thing you should be doing is adding dolomite lime. A small sprinkle of dolomite lime once a week will help neutralise the pH and mean that your worm farm won't become too acidic. The main issues that people report with their worm farms tend to be that it smells or it's attracting pests. Now if your worm farm smells, it means you're adding too much food. So the best thing to do is stop adding food, wait for the food to be consumed by the worms and that will stop the smell. The most common pests that you'll have in your worm farm will be mites, fly larvae and fruit fly. Now, there's always mites in worm farms, but if you've got a lot of them, it's a sign that your worm farm is too moist, so stop adding water for a bit. Fly larvae are attracted to excess food and they also like moist conditions. So stop adding so much food and make sure the food is covered and then stop adding water for a bit and that should deal with them. Fruit fly is attracted to excess food. And the best way to deal with that is stop adding food and make sure the food that's in there is well covered. Now I'm gonna show you how to extract and use the beautiful products that come out of these worm farms that are just so good for your plants and garden. So the worm wee makes its way through the worm farm, out the tap and into your collecting bucket. All you need to do to use that is dilute it by a factor of 10 with water and water it onto your plants and it's full of plant available nutrients. The castings are a little bit harder to remove. Now I've got a mature worm farm here. So I've got worms feeding up in this top section the middle section is full of castings. So I'm going to take off these top two layers. I'm going to remove the castings. This top layer where the worms are will move down a layer and the empty layer that I took the castings from will then go on top. And I'll begin to add food to that empty layer. The worms will slowly start moving their way up into that layer and this layer will eventually become full of castings. So we're constantly cycling the layers of our worm farm. The worm farm products, the castings and the worm wheat, are widely considered to be among the best natural fertilizers that you can get your hands on. They're chock full of plant available nutrients and full of beneficial microbial life. So they're excellent for plant and soil health. So the worm wheat was used like a liquid fertilizer, so you can regularly feed your plants. The worm castings is a bit like compost. It's not only full of nutrients, but it's also full of stable humic substances, which are very important to hold on to moisture and other nutrients within the soil. So it can be used when planting to uh, improve your soil and is also great to add to a seed raising mix. So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Best of luck. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see new content as it becomes available. Thanks for joining me.